So I think the word transitory has different meanings to different people. To, to many, it carries a time, a sense of, uh, of short-lived. We, we tend to, 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 to ha use it to mean that it, that it won't leave a permanent mark uh, in, the, in the form of higher inflation. I think it's, it's probably a good time to retire that, that uh, word and try to explain more clearly what we mean. So I'm glad I watched this clip like three times last night, but um, Ansel, what, g give us the breakdown here. Yeah, so Powell is, my takeaway is he said that transitory is just a term. And so he's going to retire that term, not necessarily the prediction or the outlook. So they're going to keep, they still have their same transitory outlook. They're just going to call it something different. And the reason why that is, is because, um, you know, people have, everyone has their own definition of inflation. Everybody is, uh, has their own definition of transitory and they can't clearly signal. And we've talked about this in the past, right? That, uh, the fed's main job is not QE and, you know, it's not low interest rates. It is narrative management or, uh, expectation management. And so they can't very well do that expectation management job when they, uh, have a word that people are, get confused a lot. So, that's my take on it. What, what did you hear from that, Christian? So, uh, yeah, I think I kind of got into the analysis before we played the clip, and um, I, I completely agree. Again, we're living in clown world. Like, that's the whole point of why Bitcoin is so important, because, like, no one knows what's happening in the economy. And, you know, it's, it's really just buzzword bingo, right? Even QE to some degree is like buzzword. So, um, you know, obviously buzzwords can be confusing, especially when uh, they, you know, whip them off, off the cuff. You know, someone said, hey, it's, there's inflation. They're like, oh, it's transitory. Everyone adopted that, you know, six months later. Maybe it's not. But, you know, then you'd go flip around and you'd say Ansel is, would argue that there's no inflation at all. So, um, you know, again, like it's, it's hard to figure out what's happening in the economy right now. And I think that is the root of the problem to begin with. And this is why we Bitcoin. Bitcoin is this transparent open source layer where you don't need the high priest of the Fed to kind of like read through the tea leaves and, you know, talk to Congress about, you know, what's happening and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, Fed speak is a thing, right? Quantitative easing is well, I would say it's not easing and it's not quantitative. Like if, if it were actually quantitative by an equation that this amount of easing is going to bring us back into recovery, we wouldn't need QE1, QE2, QE3, uh, not QE, QE infinity. It, this is by definition, if it's happening multiple times, it can't be quantitative. So yeah, it's just Fed speak. And, but remember that is what the Fed does. The Fed's main job is Fed speak. So should we jump into the next clip? But I mean, hey, I guess before we do, just it, it is, again, I can't reiterate how huge it is that Europe, they're saying it's transitory. And then now Jerome, as of last week, you know, one, his, one, his, his position was kind of unsecure and he wasn't saying much. As soon as it yes. seems as though he has a path to being reinstated, he starts, he starts opening up and then, you know, maybe speaks his mind a little bit more. And now he's going in complete contrast with, all the other central banks, predominantly Europe. Throwing them under the bus a little bit, right? Yep. 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 